of that but at the same time it is a spiritual contract when the words of faith are spoken according to the word of God by two body gate believers the power of Almighty God goes into operation there is an actual miracle that takes place when the faith of these two people is released in God's power God honors their faith and brings them into union together. With these thoughts in mind, listen very carefully to these words. Wives, submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. So let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands. 
husbands, love your wives, even also as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might present it unto himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their own wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth, even as the Lord the church, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? I am. Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? Yes, I have. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? I have. Have you received the Holy Spirit to dwell in you? Yes, I have. Now, upon the public profession of your faith, you have made known to all men that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and your Savior. I make this pronouncement before this congregation and these witnesses. When two people join themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, according to God's own word and God's own statement, they stand cleansed as clean before God as Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. This is not just a forgiveness of sins. The Bible says, man who is in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. A miracle took place when you made Jesus the Lord of your lives. The Holy Spirit used the very power of God, his creative power to cause your spirits to be reborn. It is the same power that God used when he raised Jesus from the dead and he joined you to Jesus by that power. When two born again believers come before God to be joined together as husband and wife, the apostle Paul called it a great mystery and says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. When you made the Lord, when you made Jesus the Lord of your lives, you were joined to him in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 it says you are one spirit with him. In Ephesians it says you have become one flesh with the Lord. You are his, he is yours, you are together with him. So I want you to understand that if you rightly discern the body of Christ, then you rightly discern the miracle that takes place in marriage. Your spirits today will be joined together and will become one. You will not just be one in the eyes of the Lord. There's something much more powerful that happens. The very creative power of God will join you together. The same power that joined you with Jesus when you made him Lord will join you together. Don't ever tamper with that union. The love of God say, doesn't say, I love you, but do you really love me? The love of God simply says, I love you. That is all it ever says. Don't ever tamper with that miracle. Don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Something holy, something beyond reproach will take place by the Spirit of God inside your bosom. And it is a very, very precious thing. 
And now I bless the witnesses who are here gathered. The Lord Jesus said in the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Witness eternally, forever, of the miraculous union that is about to take place. To add your own agreement before Almighty God to that which takes place. Don't ever tamper with that agreement. From today forward, regardless of what comes, you are in agreement with this union. Don't ever attempt in any way to cause it to be anything other than a happy union. In the eyes of Almighty God, these two people have washed, are washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have prayed, and before the Lord God himself, they believe with all of their hearts that it is the perfect will of God. Their decision. So from now until the end of the age, I charge you to do everything within your power to see that this union remains solid, strong, happy, and prosperous. This is a miraculous thing, and it is. to her and make this profession of faith. I. I. Say it loud and clear. I. I. The little person. The little person. According, according to the word of God. According to the word of God. Take you. Take you. Olu banke. Olu banke. Tolu lope. Tolu lope. To be my wife. Be my wife as my flesh, as my flesh, to love you, to love you, even, even as Christ, as Christ loves the church, loves the church. To protect, to protect, and to care for you, to care for in you in the faith of the gospel, in the faith of the gospel of Christ, of Christ, in health, in health, prosperity, prosperity, and joy, and joy, and in faith, and in faith, against sickness, against sickness, poverty, poverty, and death, and death, for the rest of our life, for the rest of our life, and on account. On account of this, of this, I, I, the little the little according to the word of God, according to the word of God, leave my father, leave my father, and mother, and mother, and join myself, and join myself to you, to you, to be your husband, to be your husband. From this moment forward, from this moment forward, we shall be one. We shall be one. Amen. The little as your husband. Submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of the union for the rest of your life. Yes, I do. Then turn to him and make this profession of faith. I, I, I according to the word of God, according to the word of take God, you, take you, to me to me to me to as my husband. As Submitting myself, submitting myself to you, to you as, the as the head of this union, of this union to stand with you stand with in you. the faith of the gospel of Christ, in, the faith of the gospel of Christ, in, health, in health, prosperity, prosperity and, joy, and joy, and in faith, and in faith against, sickness, against sickness, poverty, poverty and, death, and death for the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives. And on account of these, and on account of these I, I Olubanke, Olulope, according, according to, the to the word of God, submit myself, submit, to, you submit myself to you to be your wife. To be your wife. From, this moment forward, From this moment forward, we shall be one. We shall be one. Amen. Amen. Of their vows and covenant, and these rings, serving as a constant reminder, make their marriage, Lord, an unbroken, continuous fullness of love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what is the bridegroom? A ring is a very
precious thing, the token of your faith and of your love. This ring is made out of a precious metal. There's also a never-ending circle that indicates the continuity of the love of God, the love of God and the faith of God, or of course the power of God and the faith of God to move in both your lives. I want you to wear this ring as a continual reminder of the best we will make to each other and to God. Can I take this ring? The word of God says, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. If anyone could break up this union, it would be Satan. Give him no place. This is forever. Now take this ring and place it on her finger and say these words to her. With this ring, with this ring, with this ring, I beware. I beware. I beware. It is a token. It is a token of my faith and love. Of my faith and love. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. This is forever. This is forever. It is my love. It is my love. And my faith. And my faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the people say. to wait. Place this ring on his finger with these things in mind. There is no place in the word of God that gives people the right to dominate one another. The vows have stated that you both submit one to another in the responsibilities of this life. Expecting God and his power to always make the difference. So place this ring on his finger and as you do so, say these words to him. With this ring, I be wet. It is a token of my faith and love. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. It is my love and my faith in the name of Jesus. In as much as Olubanke Tulumokwe and Temitokwe Benson have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God, and this congregation, and there too have pledged their faith each to the other, and have declared the same by joining of hands and giving and receiving of rings. Ah, in unity of faith with all the other ministers here, pronounce them husband and wife in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Solemn part of the ceremony. There's a place for singing, and we're going to get to that later on. Thanks, Gideon. But you see, um, sacred blood covenant that has been sealed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, both of you, Temitokwe as well as Ulubanke uh, and Temitokwe, as Christians, believers, you have received communion in the times past, and I'm sure you know what it means. But I'd like to remind you, we live under a covenant with God. And that covenant was ratified by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. Now we see something new, eh? something that never existed before. When each of you was born again, you became individual new creatures in Christ Jesus. Now two of you together have become a corporate new creature in Christ Jesus because you are now one. When you agree on things, they will come to pass. You have an awesome power at your disposal. They're going to notice a new realm of your life beginning because of the spiritual law that says one will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand to flight. From this time forward, your everyday life will be ten thousand times more powerful spiritually than ever before. Uh, pray for them using this hymn. The choir will lead us, all perfect love, all human form, transcendent. Yeah. 
and sorrow, grant them the peace which calms all earthly strife, and to life's day the glorious unknown morrow that dawns upon eternal love and life. special marriage prayer and blessing for the couple as you see all two put ten thousand flight that is why we have all pastors and ministers here with us I will lead the prayer and then we will all lay hands on them and we will pray together Galatians chapter 3 says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we, that is we Gentiles, might be heirs of the promise of the Spirit. And in First Peter chapter 3, uh, the Bible says, okay, and I'm going to read you your blessings <clears throat> uh, and your inheritance as the seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ. This is the blessings God gave to the Jews but it's not extends to us through Jesus Christ as the seed of Abraham. So according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. If increase of thy kind Amen. and the flocks of thy sheep, Amen. blessed will be your store Amen. and your bank accounts. Amen. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Amen. Blessed shall you be when you go out. Amen. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. Amen. Yes, they will come out against you one way, but they will flee from before you seven ways. Amen. The Lord will command blessing upon you Amen. in your storehouses, Amen. your bank accounts, Amen. your investments, Amen. in all that you set your hand on. Amen. And he will bless you in this new home. Amen. The Lord thy God has given you. Amen. Yes, the Lord will establish you a holy people unto himself Amen. as he has sworn unto you. Yes. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Amen. The Lord will make you plenteous in goods. Amen. In the fruit of your body. Amen. In the fruit of your cattle. Amen. In the fruit of your ground. Amen. In this new home. Amen. This new land. With the Lord swore unto your fathers to give unto you. Amen. Yes, the Lord will open unto you his good treasure. Amen. The heaven to give rain upon his land in the season. Amen. To bless all the work of thy hand. Amen. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Amen. And thou shalt not borrow. Amen. And the Lord will make you head and not tail. Amen. Above only and not beneath. Amen. If thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God. Which I commanded this day to observe and to do them in Jesus name Amen. now I want to ask we pray for this couple Father we bring Temitope and Ulubake before you we thank you for joining them together by your spirit Lord God we come to pray for them firstly I pray for an increase in the spirit of humility Amen. and of the fear of God Amen. so that they will submit to one to another in the fear of God that they will have an increase in mercy Amen. and an increase in grace upon their lives Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray that you will give them fresh revelation. Amen. Lord, the spirit of wisdom and revelation concerning this new covenant Amen. that they have entered into between one another with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit at the center. Amen. That Lord God, they will understand the benefits as well as the responsibilities of this new covenant in the name of Jesus. Amen. I further pray that Lord God you will come and strengthen them with might Amen. by your spirit in the inner man. Amen. So that Christ will dwell more in their hearts by faith. Amen. That they will become more rooted and grounded in love. Amen. That they will be able to comprehend with all saints and in particular with one another. Amen. What is the breadth, the length, the depth and the height of the body of Christ. Amen. And they will come to know more the love of Christ which is greater than knowledge. Amen. That they that they will be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. That the life of God will be made manifest in their mortal flesh. Amen. Giving them good health. Amen. Divine protection. Amen. Blessed and wonderful children. Amen. Lord, we commit them into your hands. Amen. And we trust that Lord God, all we have said, you 
and I want the little word to perform it in their lives. In Jesus' name, we will now Lord, Mr. Fred. Lord, Holy Spirit, Nika to Fede, Abra to Tolomaste. We thank you for your blood, La Priti to Fred, La Brada, in and upon their wills, Nika to Tolomaste to Fred, their minds, La Priti to Fred, La Brada to Fred, their regional heavenlies, Rena, Shale, Reso Fredara, Abra, insufficient measure, Rita to Abra to Fred, they got stamped by the group. And uh, Master Quega, you help us do the prison. Larry, help us do the presentation. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The Lord has done a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tibby Toppe Benson. And sure, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
situations that I will not grace my pulpit with. <laughs> it's horrible things. And that's man trying to run a divine institution using human rules. No, we have to go back <coughs> to the manufacturer's handbook, the Bible. You know, look at these machines here, all these computers, all these um, organs, they're all machines, they're computers, and they run on specifications. You know, somebody made them maybe in Japan, there's a Yamaha, all kinds of different ones there. You know, and you, you, you just can't come and run the thing on your own rules. The man who made it knows what he put inside. So if he says, don't run this above 240 volts, they say, and that down will blow it, tear loose, <laughs> you know, and you'll come and plug it into anything, it will blow up. So it is with life. God made the marriage covenant, and God has his rules. And when you plug it in according to the divine specifications, you get the divine results. God forbid if you do not do that, then you get results that none of us want. And so it's very, very important. The second divine institution is um, the church after the home. God started the church. And then the third one is government. The Bible says the powers that be are ordained of God. Now, let me clarify that. Even though tomorrow is Nigeria's independence, I have a special message for that. So I'm not going to digress into that this afternoon. But I will just mention tangentially the institution of government was started by God. The Bible says the powers that be. Ordained of God. Now that does not mean God likes bad leaders, but the institution itself, it is God who started it because of man's <coughs> fall, the sin nature. After the flood of Adam, sorry, Noah, the uh, three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, you know, flooded the earth. The Bible says God then made nations, find in Genesis chapter 10. If you don't make laws and nations, the sin nature of man will take over. That's why the Bible says that they are ordained of God and they bear not the sword in vain. They, the, the, the purpose of government is to run societies based on uh, the rule of law so that people, the, the, the weak will be protected from the strong and they will not be unduly oppressed. Whenever you have an institution where you know, uh, 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 the rule of law is not in place, then people can do what they like, which is what we find this dysfunction in many, many nations today. And that is why God, in his wisdom, he knows how to deal with them. The Bible says God rules in the affairs of men. So even when you do have sometimes bad leaders who, are, who take the institution of government and they try and abuse it, it only works, it only goes on for a while. You find that God will remove them. This particular issue, look at the, you know, look at the book of Daniel, for example. See, Daniel went through about four or five uh, kings, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Belteshazzar, Darius, and then Cyrus. And you, so when God has a praying church in the nation, and that's why it's going to be well with Nigeria. Amen. When God has a praying church in, in, in every nation, even if they are bad leaders, as the church prays, God will remove them. Amen. And he will replace them with better leaders Amen. so that the will of God will be done in the nation in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's not a, you come tomorrow, you will hear the full message. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm sure that we talk about bankers and pastor, what has that got to do with us? Everything. Everything. Why? Because the home is the unit of the church. That's right. No nation is stronger than the homes and the church in them. And you see, this covenant that between the two of you is beyond the two of you. Amen. It's going to affect the children God is going to give you. Right. He's going to give you wonderful children. Amen. And the ripple effect will go on to the nation. You know? And, and, and so, this, this marriage is a serious business. Sadly, most even born-again Christians don't understand this. They just think, oh, I see a nice girl, I like her. I see a nice boy, okay, let's marry. You know, and let's enjoy ourselves. No, yes, you will enjoy yourselves. But more importantly, you are in a blood covenant. Yeah, I read one scripture, the plenty of scripture, but I'm not going to read everything because it's not a Bible study. But I will just quote them as God. But I'm going to read one. It's in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14. Right. And yet, it says, yet you say, you know, God says he hates uh, divorce. And he hates putting away. You know, then it says, because the Lord had been witness between thee and the wife of your youth, mm. against whom you have dealt treacherously, 
yet she's thy companion and the wife of your covenant. Everybody say the wife of your covenant. I didn't hear you. Right and group, say the wife of your covenant. Say husband of your covenant. Look at each other and say marriage is a covenant. Very serious. In the modern world we live today, we have what is known as contract. When you enter a legal contract between two parties, the two parties are bound to the terms of the contract. Yeah. For instance, if you enter a contract with the federal government of Nigeria, say to build a road from uh, Ibadan to wherever, you know, uh, they, 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 all the details are stated. This is the, this is the condition. After three months, or yes, three months or six months, we'll come and inspect what you have done with that three billion. If you have done, you know, you've kept the timeline, you've done the things you're supposed to do, they will give you, say it's 100 million, you know, uh, or 10 billion rather. So we'll, we'll give you another uh, 4 billion, you know, now make it seven, so you can continue. So they come and check, and then when you've done it, they give you uh, more money, then you, you do the road. Then they say, okay, when you finish on completion, we will give you the remaining three billion, making 10 billion. That's what a contract is. If either party defaults, they can take themselves to court, and the court will rule in favor of the uh, in favor of the innocent party, the one that has kept the rules, and that person will have to pay maybe a lot of money, even more than 10 million, you know, because of all kinds of uh, legal reasons. A covenant is similar, but deeper. When you enter a covenant, it is a contract, it's deeper than a contract. It is actually a, an exchange of lives. What you've actually done this morning, uh, and Rebecca, is that you've exchanged your lives. What you've done in essence is this. You have said to Banke that everything I have is yours. And you have said to Tentokwe, everything I have is yours. And I will make them available to you on demand as the situations of our lives demand. Very serious. Very, very serious. And you've got to understand that. That is why when we're taking the vows, I don't like people shouting and clapping. We clap later on during Thanksgiving. You know, because it's, 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 it's not a fickle affair. In fact, the, the traditional churches, particularly the Anglican church, is done very well in this whole thing. The parties. It's between Temitokwe, Olibanke, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's about because a threefold cord that cannot be broken. And the person that will help you to keep the covenant is that third person. Now watch this. The closer you are to that third person, the closer you're going to be to each other. Amen. And the uh, 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 antithesis is also true. The farther away you are to the third person, the farther away you're going to be to each other, God forbid. So if you want to really stay close and keep the covenant, you stay with the one who made the covenant. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And the closer you are to Jesus, you know, it's like a spoke of a wheel. If you have the center of the wheel and you have the spokes coming out, you know, the closer you are to the center, the closer the points on the spokes. The farther away you are from the center, you see the divergence. You see that, you know, moving apart from each other. So, a covenant is a very important thing. And um, I read this from E.W. Kenyon, a great man of God, many, many years ago. He has a book called The Blood Covenant. And he used the example of the writings, I think it was David Livingstone, mm -hmm. to explain it. You see, uh, and this is true, not only in Africa, it's, it's true in India. It's all people, since the fall of man, the Garden of Eden, you know, men have made covenants with each other. You know, and uh, in the Old Testament, you know, and even today, you know, uh, when uh, David Lindstrom came to Africa and he had to travel through, you know, so many different lands and he would meet with different tribes, some friendly, some very belligerent and hostile. So in order to make his journey smooth, he made a blood covenant with some of the most powerful tribes. So that 
Everything they had was theirs. Everything he had was there. It was made available to them, you know. And what they would do is this, which is what you've done this morning, without probably understanding the full implication. Back in those days, they would, they would cut. That's why it's called cut, cut. The covenant is a cut. They will cut their body and they will squeeze it, just a little bit of blood into a uh, glass or some container. They still do this in Africa, so, you know, in so many places today. Then each person will put their blood and they mix the blood together. Then they put maybe a small amount of gin or wine or something, then they drink it. So this person will drink his own, this person will drink his own. Once that is done, that covenant becomes ratified and if anybody attacked David Livingstone as he was coming down through the uh, African continent, those tribes in covenant with him would come and back him. In fact, as, I, as far as I can remember, they would, you know, you, some of the his poor bearers, because in those days they didn't have cars or anything like that, you know, the people who would be carrying his luggage and all that would be members of those tribes with their uh, 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 staffs and their, and their spears and all their weaponry. And you know, in those days, they used to have marks. So you could tell which tribe this is. Ah, no, you don't want to mess with them. Even though they're carrying a white man, if this tribe is there, let them pass free. So that's what, that's the essence of the blood of God. What you did in communion this morning, by taking the bread and the wine, is you entered into a blood covenant between you and Banke, Banke, and Tiptoque, and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the, I, I'm going to say that I don't want you to be frightened. You know, all is well. You know, you know what it says? You know what, particularly the traditional church, and they got it. You know, particularly the Anglican church, because that came out of the Reformation of Martin Luther. These were scholars who studied the Greek and the Hebrew, you know, that started what we know today as the Church of England or the Anglican church. They studied the scriptures and they always said that this is till death do us part. It's serious matter. And I said, if you part the, if you leave the covenant, you put the sentence of death on yourself. You don't want to do that. Many treat the relationship with the seriousness that it should be treated with. Today, many, particularly our young people, you know, are very fickle. Six months, oh, I can't take that. I can't stand it. I, I can't handle that. Have you heard that before? You know, and, 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 and six months, a year, the, you know, they don't understand covenant. They don't know what they're dealing with. You know, and that's why, God forbid, you know, you see so many terrible things. And you hear so many terrible things happening. But God is going to help you. Now, the purpose of marriage, having understood the covenant, is to help each other to eat of the tree of life. And that takes us again back to the Garden of Eden. After God created man, Adam, the Bible says he put it in the garden to keep it and to protect it. The Hebrew actually uses that word to keep, you know, in the King James, say keep God, but it means to protect, you know, and keep intruders out. So God knew that there was a devil who would try and come in. So he put Adam in the garden, then he put two trees. The male ego is everywhere. Whether you go to London, or whether you go to Japan, or whether you come here to Nigeria, it's the same. All men have ego. And women too. It's a part of the distorted sin nature that we inherited from six and because of four. We are. My way is to help us all. So, most men quote Philippians, Ephesians 5.20. Well, 
Come I don't know if you know. You know, he just became a pastor. <laughs> the boy bowed his head. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, oh. <laughs> Now you are married. You are a pastor. Just enter the ministry. Yeah. Church has pastors, assistant pastors, and it has deacons and saints. When you have your children, your saints, your children are the saints. As the children grow up and the ones become that more mature, and maybe you have some other people who come to help you in the house, those are the deacons. Those are who come to the church. Yes, it's a very serious business. Very, very serious business. So you've got to, you've got to understand the scriptures and submit to one another. Yes, you are the head of the home. You understand? But there's a head on top of the head. Yeah. Amen. He says, Christ is the head yeah. of the man. So the person that takes the final decision in the house is not you. He's the head of the head. So that's why he said, you submit to one another, what? In the fear of that head. So sometimes God will bring his wisdom to and tell that you as a man don't agree. God, when you go and pray, the head will say, listen to Banket. <laughs> then you say, <laughs> the Bible says, okay. Jesus is the head of this relationship. Keep him head, you won't have problems. Correction, you will have problems but you will solve them. See, a perfect marriage and a perfect home is not one that doesn't have problems. That's a utopia. It doesn't exist. The reality is this. A perfect home and a perfect marriage is one in which all the problems are eventually solved by those three things. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the power of God. Now, it doesn't matter the challenges you face. If you apply those three things, sometimes not instant, but if you stay with it, you will find that you will eventually overcome them. Amen? Amen. But the key is this submission to one another in the fear of God which will bring the grace and the mercy of God. Number two, forgiveness. You have to learn and practice forgiving one another and other people you come into contact with. Why? Why? Because of the fall of man. All of us have to some degree, we're going on to perfection, but we still have some vestiges of the sin nature in our soul, which is the mind, the will, the emotions, as well as in our physical bodies. So there'll be times Jenny Dumbbell will say things and do things you don't like. There'll be times Ruth Banker will say things and do things you don't like. What do you do? Forgive. It's a decision. You've got to understand that. If you're waiting to feel the right, you will never forgive. Ah, oh, my daughter Chef Mill. Hmm. Can you let to me God? My forgiveness, no, but it's not. Oh, Have you heard that before? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Amen. You are waiting for feeling. Mm. Don't wait for feeling. I tell you what to do. I do it daily, you know, and my wife and I have practicing for many years. This is what you do. When, when, whenever something goes wrong, the first thing out of your mouth is, Father, I forgive Jennifer Bell. I do it because your word says so, not because I feel like doing it. Then I remit his sins or her sins by the blood of Jesus. No, the Bible says so. Then I won't stop now. I ask life for her. Or I ask life for him. First John chapter 5, verse 16. It says, if you see your brother's sin, say, ask life for him. This same Zoe, this same life of God that got you born again. Ask for a fresh dose of life for the person. Then that won't stop you. Then you will now pray for her in tongues. The Bible says, pray, you know, in the spirit, you know, edifying one another in the love of God. You know what's going to happen? Something miracle also happen. You will find that when you do that, based on decision, not feeling and emotion, you find that God will just enter the situation. Then Maybe an hour later, two hours later, you just find that the whole situation just kind of disappears. Then you, you, you start feeling okay. 
The feeling you were waiting for. You don't wait for the feeling. You set these spiritual laws into operation, then your feelings will change. Yeah. Of ground. Are you listening? We need to face the facts. Yes, Are you sir. listening to me? Yes, sir. You know, when they do, this thing I'm telling you is the first thing that you should set into operation. You know, and you will find that as you do that, God will work in the situation, you know, and, and deal with your emotions, deal with the situation around, you know, and he will help you so that the thing does not escalate and then go out of proportion. To avoid this, you know what the Bible says? It says, don't let the sun go down on your heart. Yeah. Wrong things. Another thing, don't talk to other people about it, especially mommy and daddy. Because they will be emotional. Don't talk to anybody about it. Of telling your parents or your friends. They will not forget. So it may be two years later. They say, hey, what are you saying? Don't say nothing. Yes. Keep it to yourselves. The more you talk about the problem, the bigger it becomes. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Don't keep telling. Yeah, yeah. You first you get to the office, how was your day? This husband that I married, but I don't even understand him. Don't worry, God don't share for me. You are killing your home. The Bible says a, a wise woman, you know, builds a house, a foolish woman with her own hand, talk it down. Don't talk about the the, the mistakes and the sins and the and the things of your husband towards other people. If you're going to have to talk to anybody, talk to the Holy Spirit. Or a spiritual minister. I didn't say a minister. A spiritual one. Because most of the ministers, sadly, today are not spiritual. Sadly. Look for somebody who is deep in the spirit, who you can trust. They're free. To anybody. That's why the Bible says, don't speak your brother's sins. He said, go and tell him. Not just any two or three. Poor these spiritual people. He says, it doesn't hear. Then go and tell the church doesn't mean go and tell him. His name is the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. Use the next 30 minutes, one hour, talking in tongues. You will find your feeling will change. Amen. But when you start going, he did this, he said that, she did that, she said that, blah blah blah. You're destroying your home. Don't do it. That's why I'm giving you practical of how this thing works. Number three, you know, communication. I just give an example of my wife now. You know, communication is very important. You have to talk every day, you know. So it has to be led by the Holy Spirit. I call it wise, spirit-led communication. You need wisdom, especially when the situation, there, there are difficult situations at home, and they happen. The Bible says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. There's a way to talk. You can say the right thing in a wrong way. If you say the right thing in a nice way, maybe your husband did something or your wife did something and you don't like it, you know. Don't man say, hey, that's what I've said about you. When will you even learn? There was all that, or to sorrow, go by, or to shake by. Is it cold? You've come from a standpoint of condemnation rather from a standpoint of reconciliation. And the, the gospel we're living is a gospel of reconciliation and not of condemnation. What should you say? Oh no. Firstly, I'm sorry. You don't say I'm sorry because you are right or because you are wrong. You say I'm sorry because you want peace. You're not trying to prove a legal contest at home. You're not trying to win a case. Hello? You're not a prosecutor or a defense attorney. Do you understand? You are a person who is looking for reconciliation. So you just say, I'm so sorry about that situation. Don't say it's your fault or my fault. That's not important. But I'm sorry about the situation. You know, um, God will have mercy on both of you. Your mouth. 
or finish the woman with your mouth. It's true. Words can either create a nice atmosphere in the home or can create a toxic, poisonous. And words are spiritual, they fill the air. Only by your grace. Only by your grace.
some very important personalities here. All of us are very important. But the Bible says we should give honor to whom honest. So it's very important that we honor them and that we recognize them. So uh, His Royal Majesty, Oba Dr. Munuruddin Adeshola Lawal and Lami Laminiza Edo. Timmy of Edeland, Oshu State. God bless you. Give him a super hand. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. With his uh, two Oloris, Olori Sulaila, Sulaila Titi Layo Lawal and Olori Aishat Yabo Lawal. Please recognize them and honor them. Thank you. You are welcome. Then, His Royal Highness. Oba Abdul Aziz Nure Oye Depo Ajibola the Olu of Owode Ede Land of Shu State. A super hand. Fabesi, Eshesa, it's wonderful to have you. Praise the Lord. Then, one very, other, very, very important person. The, uh, she's the boss of the Gardens of the Bride, you know, uh, Professor Bemisola Oke. The former Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University Please give her a super hand. Wait, yes, 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 Ah, yes, she's up here right now. You know, uh, since that way, now we go back a long way. I want to say more than that. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. So, now we are going to go ahead with the thanksgiving. And please listen to the ushers. They will direct us row by row. Then we will come. You know, from this
Thank you. 